John, so now I'm going to examine your ears. For the purpose of examination, I can see you adequately exposed. Thank you for that. I have a chaperone to ensure your privacy. May I proceed? Yes. Do you have got pain anywhere? No, doctor. Right. So uh, I'll be gentle and quick. At any point of time, you feel uncomfortable or you want me to stop, let me know. I will stop my examination. Okay. Right. So now, firstly, I'm going to go to your side and I'll be having a look at your ears. And I just want you to look straight for me. All right. There is no redness, no swelling, no scar mark uh, for any surgery in both the ears. No bleeding discharge coming out of the ears. No sign of any injury or trauma. Now, uh, John, what I'm going to do, I'm going to touch your ear. Is that all right? So firstly, we're going to just compare the temperature. Compare the temperature of the ear with the cheeks. Compare the temperature of the ear with the cheeks. Now, for tenderness, we have to start with the pre-auricular area. Use your two fingers and check the tenderness in the pre-auricular area and make sure you're looking at the patient's face for any kind of tenderness. For auricular, this is how you hold the pinna. And for post-auricular, make sure you use the thumb and press on the mastoid. So there is no tenderness on pre-auricular, auricular or post-auricular area. And then we have to check for the tragus. This is very important. This is your tragus. So what we have to do is you have to press on it. We have to see if we have got any tragal tenderness. If there is tragal tenderness, it means patient might be having otitis externa and then you may not be able to do otoscopy. Make sure you repeat everything on the other ear as well. So we go for pre-auricular, auricular and post-auricular tenderness and make sure we do tragal tenderness on the other ear as well. Now we are ready for otoscopy. So that is our otoscope and make sure uh, of one thing before you start the examination make sure you have got extra ear pieces as well because we are going to check both the ears and make sure after you're done with the examination in one year you're gonna change the ear piece as well right again another thing if we have to examine we will always be starting with the normal ear for example if my patient right ear is uh, uh, abnormal ear there is some problem in the right ear so i'm going to start with the left ear first so what we have to do for the examination right so first thing is uh, first we shine the light in the external auditory canal we shine the light in the external auditory canal we look for uh, any foreign body that's the first thing so this is how you hold the otoscope like a pen making sure the little finger is on the patient's cheek this is uh so this is the correct way of holding it with the other hand, make sure you pull the pinna upward and backward. And you look if there is anything that you see in the ear. Now, before you go to the next ear, what we have to do is make sure you change the earpiece. You put the new earpiece and we go to the other side. Right? So, first thing that we are going to do is uh, shining the light. Pinna. You have to pull the pinna upward, backward, holding it like a pen little finger on the patient's cheeks and you insert your otoscope and you verbalize your finding for example in the normal normal tympanic membrane what are the things you're going to look for i can see the tympanic membrane it's pearly gray in color i can see umbo cone of light parts tensor parts lecida is visible annulus is visible as well so most probably it is normal tympanic membrane so this is what we have to do in uh, otoscopy. Now let's do hearing test. First, we're going to do auditory acuity. So John, what I'm going to do, I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to go to your side. I'm going to rub my finger. You just have to say which ear you can hear. So could you please close your eyes and tell me which ear you can hear? Right. right. And now? Left. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to check your hearing. Uh, you can open your eyes. So I'm going to use this instrument. This is a tuning fork. It's a buzzing instrument. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to buzz it and I'm going to place it behind your ear. And when it, when you are not able to hear it, let me know. I'll bring it in front and you just have to tell me if you can still hear it or not. All right. So I'm going to buzz it. And first I'm going to place it behind your ear. So tell me if you can hear. 
Can you hear? Yeah. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Can you still hear? Yes. Okay. So it means air conduction is more than bone conduction. It means Rene positive. Right. So let's do it on the other side as well. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. So tell me if you can hear it or not. Can you hear? Yes. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Can you still hear? Yes. Okay. So it means it's the same on the other side as well. So air conduction is more than bone conduction, meaning Rene positive. So my patient is either normal or my patient might have sensory neural hearing loss. That I'm going to confirm by doing Weber's test. So now, John, now let's do Weber's test. So now, John, I'm going to buzz it again. This time, I'm going to place it on your forehead. And you have to tell me if you can uh, hear on the left side or right side. Or if you don't hear at all. Or if it is same on both the sides. Okay? okay. So tell me where you can hear. Left side. Left side. So what my patient said, air conduction more than bone conduction in both the ears and Weber lateralized to the left side. So this means my patient has got sensory neural hearing loss on the right side. All right. So let me demonstrate conductive hearing loss as well for you. All right. So now, John, I'm going to buzz this instrument again and I'm uh, going to place behind your ear. Tell me when you can hear when it stops. Right. And then I'm going to bring it in front as well. Okay. Can you hear it? Yeah. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Can you still hear? Yes. Okay. So it means air conduction is more than bone conduction. Let's do on the other ear. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other ear now. Can you hear? Yes. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Can you still hear? No. Okay. So it means bone conduction is more than air conduction. Most probably my patient has got conductive hearing loss on the left side. But let's confirm it by doing the Weber's test. I'm going to buzz it again, John. And this time I'm going to place on your forehead. You just have to tell me which ear you can hear better. Is it left or right? Or you don't hear at all? Or if it is same on both the sides? All right. Okay. Left side. Okay. So air conduction more than bone conduction and the right ear bone conduction more than air conduction in the left ear and Weber lateralized to the left side. So patient has got left sided conductive hearing loss. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. I appreciate me. Hello, our Plap2 course. You can attend online or you can attend in person with only one payment. And you will be getting the opportunity to practice with the tutor in both the courses, whether you are attending online or you are attending in person. And also you will be getting the access for the recorded videos that you can see at your own convenience. So looking forward to see you all. Thank you.